Hey guys, I'm Brett, the Nerdy Engineer. In this video, I'm going to talk about parking your Model X in your garage. After I ordered my Model X, it occurred to me that I never actually even checked to make sure I could fit it into my garage. So after I had a mini panic attack because I realized how big the Model X actually was compared to my old vehicle, I searched the internet and was able to find all the key dimensions I needed to see if it actually fit. Luckily it did, as you can see, uh, but it's a big vehicle. So the overall length is about 198 inches, and then the width is about 90 inches. That's bigger than your average vehicle, to say the least. So after I assured myself that the Model X would actually fit in my garage, then I started to wonder about how the Falcon Wing doors would actually work. I noticed that my tracks are too low, so the Falcon Wing doors wouldn't have opened all the way. And with the garage door open, that wouldn't really be a problem because the Falcon Wing door should sense the garage door and stop short. But I was mostly concerned about what would happen if I opened the Falcon Wing doors while the garage door was shut because that track's pretty small and I was afraid that the Falcon Wing doors wouldn't sense it and stop in time. To solve the issue with the tracks, I decided to look at back into the garage instead of pulling front. And I noticed that the Falcon Wing doors are a lot closer to the back of the car than they are at the front. The Falcon Wing door starts about 106 inches from the front of the car and then the end of the Falcon Wing door is about 160 inches from the front. So it's a lot closer to the back of the car than it is the front and I figured out if I backed in I could just miss the tracks and the motor and the Falcon Wing door should open fine. A little trick that I used was actually uh, putting masking tape down on the garage floor so I could really visualize how big the Model X was and where the Falcon Wing doors were. That really helped alleviate any fears I had about how I was going to park the Model X. After I decided that I was going to back in with the Model X, I didn't want my first time to be with the Model X, so in about two months that I had before taking delivery of mine, I started backing in with my old vehicle to get the hang of it. And that old vehicle was a lot harder to back in. I did have a backup camera, but it was really low resolution. But after a while, I got the hang of it, and I actually kind of preferred backing in. Another thing you want to consider is where your charger is at in relationship to how you want to park and which side of the garage you park on. I decided to install my charger right in the middle of the garage to give me the most options. It didn't matter which way I parked or which side of the garage I parked on. It's just something to consider if you haven't installed your charger yet, or if your charger is installed, then your options on how you park might be a little more limited. The last thing I was concerned about is how much room I would need behind the car to actually open the trunk all the way. Some vehicles, when they're boxier, the trunk really extends pretty far behind the car to when it opens, but luckily the Model X isn't like that. At the maximum point, it only probably extends about 12 or 13 inches past the bumper, which means you really don't need much room back there to open the trunk. One more to caution with the trunk is the trunk doesn't actually have any sensors on it. So when you go to open the trunk, the only sensor that the car uses to see if there's any obstructions is the sensor in the middle of the roof. So just kind of be aware of that, uh, that if you park under something that's only blocking the trunk, then the car's not going to know that and you could potentially damage your trunk. A little trick that I used to make sure that I pulled in far enough, but not too far, is I put a strip of masking tape down on the ground behind the car, and that way when I'm right in the perfect spot, the masking tape's right on the edge of the backup camera. And so I, I know that I won't have any issues opening the Falcon Wing doors, it's not going to hit the motor, and also I have enough room behind the car to open the trunk fully and to be able to get stuff in and out of the trunk without any problems. The old thing was the tennis ball, uh, that obviously works too. I feel like because of the backup camera, the masking tape works pretty well. The side sensors do a, a really good job of stopping the door short of hitting the wall, but sometimes I'll park a little too close to the wall, so the door doesn't really open far enough for me to get in and out that well. So what I did is I bought some little foam bumpers from Amazon and put them on the wall. That way I can open the door a little further and it'll touch those bumpers and it's not going to touch the wall and potentially scratch the door. Well that's it for this video. Hopefully it helps some people out that were a little concerned about if their Model X was going to fit in their garage or not or how they were going to park it. Don't forget about Tesla's referral program right now. If you're looking to buy a new Model S or Model X, you can save a thousand bucks by using someone's referral code. So I'll put a link to mine in the description down below or if you have a buddy that has a Tesla, make sure you ask them for their code before you order yours, that way you save a thousand bucks. And to be grandfathered into the unlimited supercharging, you have to order your Tesla before the end of the year. Uh, after that, they're going to be doing only 400 kilowatt hours per year uh, free supercharging and then you have to pay for supercharging beyond that. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. 